Good morning. The committee will come to order. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us here today, and special thanks to our witnesses for being here today to testify. Um, the Department of Agriculture and Small Business Administration are two of the federal agencies with significant resources and also the potential to drive economic growth in our small towns and in our rural areas. Uh, these agencies are tasked with administrating hundreds of millions of dollars in funding for businesses and community development, and today's hearing is about making sure that our taxpayer dollars are being used effectively and are reaching the rural communities that need them the most. As the Congresswoman from Iowa's first congressional district, I know firsthand that our friends and neighbors in rural communities are dealing with a lot of challenges, especially right now. Um, growing up in Cheryl, Iowa, as I like to say, uh, a town with more cows than people, uh, in rural Dubuque County, my mom and dad taught my brother and my sisters and I the value of hard work how to respect and care for others, and also the strength of our rural communities. Sadly, some of our rural communities are still struggling to recover from the recession. From 2010 to 2016, population in rural counties went down as people left our small towns for what they hoped would be better jobs, or went away for college or graduate schools and never came back home. This trend is starting to reverse, though, in some places. Nationally, the number of people living in rural areas actually went up between 2016 and 2017, the first rural population increase in nearly a decade, though this growth isn't being seen in every rural county. According to the Department of Agriculture, much of that growth is concentrated in communities closer to big cities or in areas with more infrastructure or development, which is also incredibly important. As a member of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, we cannot underscore that enough. Um, rural unemployment is also going down, but still hasn't caught up to the lower rates in urban and metropolitan areas. We still have more work to do to improve economic opportunities in our small towns and our rural communities and make sure that places like Northeast Iowa are not left behind as our way of life and doing business changes. That's the reason we're here today to learn more about what the Small Business Administration and the Department of Agriculture can do to give small businesses, businesses in rural America the tools they need to grow and succeed. When we look at ways to drive economic and business development in rural communities, one strategy that has demonstrated real promise is small-scale entrepreneurship. Small businesses create more than half of all jobs in new rural areas. Entrepreneurs in rural America start businesses at higher rates than urban Americans, and their businesses are often more resilient than storefronts and startups in urban areas. Rural America has also become more economically diverse than in past decades, as, sec as sectors like healthcare and tourism continue to grow. In Northeast Iowa, our small business owners are not just farmers and manufacturers, but include biofuel producers, breweries, and bike shop owners, for example. I think that many of my colleagues here today, and I know Dr. Joyce, can speak to how the economic opportunities and challenges in rural communities that they represent have changed over the last decade. I bring this up to underscore the need for policy solutions that are flexible and also dynamic to support small businesses and rural e economies. I already know some of the ways that the Department of Agriculture and Small Business Administration are making a difference when it comes to economic development in Northeast Iowa. We have seen it firsthand. For example, a value-added producer grant from the Department of Agriculture helped Dan and Debbie's Creamery, a first-generation dairy farm in Eli, Iowa, offer new products, expand into new markets, and become part of a growing regional foods movement in Iowa. A community Memorial Hospital in Sumner, Iowa, was able to actually leverage financing from the Department of Agriculture to build new health care facilities and expand access to specialty care in Bremer County. These are the success stories and two of the examples of how the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development is partnering with our businesses, public and private community-based organizations, and financial institutions to create jobs and new economic opportunities in rural areas. The Small Business Administration, similar to the Department of Agriculture, has many programs designed to boost access to capital and support small businesses. On almost every main street that I go in in Iowa, I hear how financing backed by the Small Business Administration has helped small business owners turn their dreams into reality. Unlike Department of Agriculture rural development programs, the Small Business Administration helps urban and rural businesses alike, um, but the bulk of their services are concentrated in metropolitan areas. 
Part of the reason why we're here today is to ensure that resources and services offered by the Small Business Administration are well suited to assist our small businesses in rural areas and complement existing rural development programs. A few months ago, I joined my colleagues, Mr. Cox, Mr. Golden, and Ms. Craig in sending a letter to the Small Business Administration requesting more information about its Office of Rural Affairs, an entity that was actually established by Congress nearly 20 years ago, uh, but was seemingly never set up by the Small Bus Business Administration. And while I'm pleased the administration has recently appointed a national director of the Office of Rural Affairs, it isn't clear how this office is now serving small businesses or why the agency has only now appointed a director. In 2013 and again in 2018, the Department of Agriculture and the Small Business Administration signed a memorandum of understanding to support rural small businesses and economic development. I'm particularly interested in learning more about how the most recent agreement has changed, how these agencies are working together, and improving the effectiveness of their services. Given the state of agricultural economy at this time, and especially in my state in particular, I'm especially interested in learning how the Office of Rural Affairs will be working with the Department of Agriculture to provide additional assistance to our farmers and agribusinesses during this very uh, troubling time. When the president's ongoing trade war with China and attacks on renewable fuel standard, on top of the flooding and extreme weather we have seen in the Midwest, our farmers are hurting. And I hope that today's discussion will help us find ways to improve coordination and collaboration between these programs that serve small businesses across all sectors of the rural economy. Again, thank you so much to our witnesses for being here today um, for what I hope will be a very productive discussion. And um, I'm excited to have Dr. Joyce joining us here as well, our ranking member. And with that, I would like to yield to Dr. Joyce, ranking member of this committee. Thank you, Chairwoman Finkenauer. And thank you for holding this hearing and for holding the hearing last month in Gettysburg in my district. It was a pleasure to introduce you to the Keystone State, and I hope you can come back and spend more time in Gettysburg and tour the battlefields. At that field hearing, my constituents explained the significant negative effects of poor internet service and the access that the internet has on our communities. There is no doubt that small businesses of all industries require access to reliable and affordable broadband to compete in local, national, and international markets. Rural small businesses like those in my district and in our chairwoman's district as well are constrained by limited access to resources. In addition, inadequate access to the internet, rural firms have less financing options, less qualified and available workers, and less business assistance services than urban firms do. Our rural communities depend on the success of local small businesses. Today we will review the USDA and SBA Rural Economic Development Initiatives and those impacts on small businesses. In a 2008 report, a U.S. Government Accountability Office report titled Rural Economic Development, Collaboration Between SBA and USA, USDA Could Be Improved, determined that the SBA and the USDA have complementary missions and services in our rural areas. GAO recommended that these agencies initiate more formal collaborations, which would allow leverage the unique strengths of each program, increase the number of financing options available to rural borrowers, and ultimately improve economic development in rural areas. My question that we'll pose to you with your presentations is, has there been any progress over the past 11 years? Thank you for both of our witnesses for providing us an update on the collaborative efforts between SBA and USDA. As the Small Business Committee, we know that your teamwork has the greatest impact. I yield back. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. The gentleman yields back. And if subcommittee members have an opening statement prepared, we ask that they be submitted for the record. 
Uh, I would now just like to take a minute to explain the timing rules. Each witness gets five minutes to testify, and the members get five minutes for questioning. Uh, there's a lighting system right in front there to assist you. The green light will be on when you begin, and then the yellow light will come on when you have one minute remaining. Uh, the red light comes on when you're out of time, and we ask that you stay within uh, the time frame to the best of your ability. I would now like to introduce our witnesses. Our first witness is Miss is Bet Brand, the administrator of the Rural Business Cooperative Service at the Department of Agriculture. She came to the agency after 35 years with Farm Credit of the Virginias, where she most recently served as chief advocate for the agriculture industry and rural business supporting producers at the state and national level and educating policymakers and consumers about agriculture. She has a wide ranging she has wide ranging experiences having served on the Virginia Agribusiness Council, the Virginia Horse Council, the Virginia Cooperative Council, and the Virginia Foundation for Agriculture in the classroom. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here today, Ms. Brand. Uh, our second witness is Ms. Michelle Christian, who was first appointed uh, by the White House on February 20th, 2018 to serve as the U.S. Small Business Administrator, Administration Mid-Atlantic Regional Administrator. As the regional administrator, she was responsible for overseeing the delivery of the agency's small business programs and business development initiatives throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, recently, she was elevated to the position of National Director of the Office of Rural Affairs, uh, where she is responsible responsible for overseeing business and economic development throughout rural America. Uh, thank you both so much for being here today, and I will now recognize each witness for five minutes uh, to provide their testimony. Ms. Bran, uh, you are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, and good morning. Chairwoman Finkenauer, Ranking Member Joyce, and distinguished members of the committee. My name is Betty Brand, and I am the administrator for USDA Rural Development's Rural Business Cooperative Service. The Rural Business Cooperative Service, or RBCS, provides capital to rural businesses and communities to improve economic opportunity and quality of life for rural Americans. As administrator, I oversee the programs delivered by the Rural Business Cooperative Service, which includes business programs, cooperative com programs, community economic development programs, and energy programs. The investments RBCS makes to help support America's long-term prosperity by ensuring that our rural communities continue to contribute to the economy, grow, and prosper. Our business programs provide financial backing to stimulate business creation and growth through partnerships with public and private community-based organizations and financial institutions. Through our programs, we partner with rural businesses to deliver financial assistance and business development to help provide capital for facilities, improvements for energy efficiency, renewable energy production, job training, equipment, and entrepreneurial skills that support, create, and preserve quality jobs in rural communities. Along with America's rural businesses, cooperatives also make up an essential part of the U.S. economy, helping farmers and ranchers not only market their products, but also providing services that keep our rural communities going, such as electricity, telecommunications, financial services, and home health care. Communities also have benefited from other cooperatives, other cooperatives such as grocery stores, pharmacies, and hardware stores. RBCS delivers programs designed to help rural communities begin, improve, and expand cooperatives. The Rural Business Cooperative Service also recognizes the value of energy efficiency through rural businesses, cooperatives, and communities. As a result, we have a suite of programs that are designed to help finance the cost of renewable energy systems and improve energy efficiency for our customers. We are also committed to partnering with other federal agencies to improve program effectiveness and delivery to businesses, organizations, cooperatives, and consumers across rural America. In April of 2018, USDA signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Small Business Administration to strengthen collaboration on a shared set of goals, including improved access to capital in rural communities, streamlining program, program delivery, 
innovation for rural technical assistance providers, and partnerships with rural businesses to provide the tools they need to succeed. The MOU established four interagency working groups to address some of the challenges in rural America, but specifically focused on business growth and access to capital. Field collaboration for both USDA and SBA has been a valuable outcome of the MOU in order to strategically meet the needs of rural businesses across the country. USDA and SBA have set forth strategic goals and objectives for fiscal year 2020 to provide access to capital and to increase awareness of programs that support the mission of both agencies. Thank you for having me here today to discuss the, port, the important work that Rural Business Cooperative Service does to support rural businesses, cooperatives, and communities. USDA will continue to work with SBA to promote economic prosperity in rural communities because together, America prospers. At this time, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Ms. Brandon. You may have noticed while you were opening up there that we've <laughs> changed faces on you. Um, looking forward to having a good back and forth and, and thanks again uh, for, for being here today. And uh, Ms. Radawagon and I have worked together actually recently on a uh, bill to reauthorize the small business development centers, uh, uh, which you are, are likely uh, uh, familiar with, Ms. Christian. And I, I'd go ahead and recognize you for five minutes for opening statement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, members, and thank you for inviting me here to today's hearing. I am honored to have the opportunity to discuss SBA's focus on rural entrepreneurism, entrepreneurship, and the positive impact of those efforts are having on America's small businesses. My name is Michelle Christian. I am the Small Business Administration's Director of Rural Affairs, a position that I am pleased to have accepted two months ago after serving as the Mid-Atlantic Regional Administrator. I coordinate now with SBA's nationwide regional administrators, all of our 68 district offices, and all of our partners to engage directly with rural entrepreneurs. By working closely with these district offices and other federal agencies, SBA's Office of Rural Affairs can directly assist in connecting rural communities and entrepreneurs, no matter where they are, in their process of starting their business with vital small business resources to help them start and grow. At the SBA, we use strategic relationships and partnerships to reach all of our small business constituents, including those in rural areas where my office will specifically focus on. In 2018, former Administrator Linda McMahon made SBA's rural initiative a priority for the agency. Bolstered by the Memorandum of Understanding with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we are furthering the administration's goal to bring prosperity back to rural America. The goal of the MOU is to strengthen rural businesses and agricultural economies through more effective program delivery and increased access to capital. Because of the MOU, the USDA and SBA have better coordination in administering their respective programs. And we are designing it to aid rural small businesses and entrepreneurs. Working individually, SBA and USDA do have different customers. Working together, each agency can now reach a new constituency. And that is a positive impact that the MOU has now had. Our outreach and connection building with rural businesses and communities is and has been a mission of the SBA. My position as director is to now coordinate the activities and the outreach with our SBA district offices and to be sure to include the federal, state, and local partners in all of the rural communities to educate everyone on all of our resources. These outreach events focus on bringing federal resources directly to the rural entrepreneurs and directly to the rural small business owners. SBA is well positioned to lead these rural outreach sessions since we have many connections in these small local communities. We hold regular roundtables and forums where we, in conjunction with our resource partners, local chambers and community leaders, support the small business ecosystem as a whole. In rural opportunity zones, we educate rural communities on the potential for investment, as well as the incentives created by this program. 
Outreach events and activities are happening across the country in our regional offices, district offices, and resource partners. One of the key aspects of my job is to listen to businesses. Simply having events that we show up and showcasing what we have and do and leave is just simply not enough. We must listen and we must understand how the current process or program in the federal government is or is not working for them. And we must ensure proper follow-up, and that is the key. It is through this outreach that I have learned that rural entrepreneurs often face challenges that non-rural owners don't, such as lack of broadband. I'd like to thank by closing the committee for the chance to discuss how SBA is able to help rural small businesses. Why I might not be an obvious choice for this rural affairs position, I am from New Jersey, I went to school in New York, and I live outside of Philadelphia. But I have a real passion to help and address the needs of the people in rural America. Everyone might not want to take advantage of what we are telling them, and they may never want to talk to us again. But it is our job to ensure that every American, regardless of where they reside and live, is informed of the programs and services that are available through the federal government. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead and uh, kick things off. Uh, um, you know, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about, and um, Ms. Christian, uh, it's just out of curiosity. Actually, you had uh, pointed out uh, in your written testimony, I think maybe a, a little bit uh, uh, in your opening uh, statement, you talked about 40 percent of opportunity zones uh, being uh, designated in, in rural areas. Uh, which I think has potential uh, to be very helpful uh, in some communities. Uh, I'm getting some feedback, though, on the ground in, in my district, uh, which is, I believe, the second most rural in, in uh, the entire House of Representatives. Um, uh, it's big and large, uh, main second congressional district, uh, that there's not r really a lot of activity uh, going on around these. And some concerns uh, that by the time some of the uh, guidelines were put out, uh, the program you know, was, was well advanced uh, and, and people um, asking for an extension uh, of sorts in order to be able to apply. Uh, but I was just curious what strategies you might have in mind uh, to try and get people to more actively pursue these opportunities because I, I do think to date that many of the uh, investments have been focused on, on more uh, metropolitan and ur urban areas where uh, there's a longer history of, of investment uh, perhaps viewed as less risky for investors uh, and I think that that um, is unfortunate because I think that the spirit of the law was certainly meant to direct some of these uh, opportunities into rural areas. So um, any, any ideas in, in planning that you have on that? So I have two ideas, actually. The first week of December, there will be some Opportunity Zone events actually in Maine, too. Uh, I hope you are made aware of those. And if not, we will make sure that, that you are. Um, we are trying to focus more on the rural areas when it comes to Opportunity Zones because the cities are low-hanging fruit. Uh, Baltimore was able to hire a Opportunity Zone czar. Uh, rural communities are not able to do that. Local mayors and economic development folks are very focused on uh, just running the town, quite frankly. And it's difficult to learn all the nuances um, with these rules and regulations that keep coming out. So there is a focus to educate uh, the local communities, the small rural communities, on what they can achieve through this program. It is a push, and it will be a push through my office to educate the communities. I was recently speaking with um, a very small town economic development team and trying to showcase to them how small businesses in their community can grow and how we can also attract new businesses. Because even when a bigger business comes, small businesses thrive because it's the ancillary business. It's the supply chain. So there's so much more than um, when people just think small business. And quite frankly, we go up to 500 people. So in rural America, America, a facility with 500 people, I sometimes get a, a, a glare. It's like, we don't need a 500 facility, 500 person facility. A manufacturing plant with 150 will do just fine. So I, I think it's apples and oranges with cities to, to these rural areas, but we are out there. We are trying to inform. And, and that goes back to what we do at SBA. It's really letting individuals and communities know what the resources are. And in regard to opportunity zones, the way this is framed, it really is a bottom-up approach. This is not a federal program coming down because the investment is coming from private entities. And what you said, sometimes the investment might not 
pencil out in a rural community. And, and that is the issue where you go to Brooklyn, you may have a better chance of getting a very, very quick return. But in a lot of these other communities, there may be some work there to be done. That being said, there are the, the White House Opportunity Revitalization Council has the 17 federal agencies and commissions that are working with their grants and programs to give priority and preference points and a special treatment, for lack of a better term, to these communities so that they can better themselves. So hopefully through those two programs, the investment and the programs through the federal government, we can help revitalize these communities. Well, I look forward to uh, learning more about how things go in, in my district uh, and would certainly love to join or have my staff there and, and, and be a part of that. We've had a great relationship with the SBA office and uh, the state of Maine and we would love to continue that. But I think uh, you're spot on. Uh, you know, town managers, uh, you know, usually are, don't even have an economic development uh, director or someone to assist them. Uh, so the follow-up piece of what you were talking about in regards to your office's mission, I think, is actually most critical uh, because people don't have a lot of bandwidth uh, and really do need uh, an aggressive office that will not only show up and listen, like you, you said, and that's just step one, but, but then secondly, follow up and actually bring some some manpower and resources to the table to actually help people access some of these great programs uh, that are potentially out there for them. So thank you. That is the key, I believe, to what I'm going to do with this office is to ensure that follow-up because it's not enough to just give the information. It's helping them utilize that information correctly. Thank you. We will certainly have uh, some follow-up questions, uh, but uh, I will go ahead and r recognize uh, uh, Congresswoman Radawagon for... for Five minutes of questioning, thank you. Talofan, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also want to welcome Ms. Brand and Ms. Christian, and thank you for testifying today. My first question is for the both of you. What is the best way for rural business owners to learn about each of your programs? Ms. Brand? Thank you for that question. Um, we are very fortunate to have um, People are a team from rural development in each of the states or serving specific states and 47 that cover across the United States. Within those state, the um, state directors, we also have a team that are specifically trained in the different program areas. And so that is the key, the primary source of being able to provide information is having direct access to an individual that can not only uh, explain their programs, but help walk through how they may best use all the programs to better serve. In addition, we of course have the um, website and, and uh, many avenues for media and um, information. We also, many of our programs are guaranteed programs, so we work really hard to inform our lenders, and they too are a, a very good advocate because they go out and seek businesses, and um, we are then able to guarantee the loans for them. Ms. Christian? Thank you. We have our 68 field offices throughout the country and our 10 regional administrators. And we are focused on getting into these rural areas. Terrain is somewhat of a problem for them to get to uh, locations where we might be at. So we have made it a point to go to them. And especially with access to capital, we are trying to hold events at a library, at a local chamber, um, at, at a community building, so that we bring the lenders to them. A lot of these rural communities are having community banks leave their area. So the banker that they've always known, that their parents used, they're no longer there. And trust sometimes is an issue in these types of communities, and we want to make sure we can connect people one-on-one. -on -one. So we are going into the communities and bringing the resources to them, not only our resources at the SBA, but also of our resource partners, so that they can connect with mentors and individuals that can help them start that business no matter where they are on that food chain. So if they're looking for a business plan, and I like to say even if you woke up in the morning and you just have an idea and you just want someone to talk about that idea with, we're going to bring that person to you. So we're making it a point to bring our resources to your community because to tell everyone to go on a website when broadband is such an issue is quite frankly not helpful. So we are coming out to those communities individually, in person to help them. As a follow-up, do, uh, do USDA staff know SBA programs and vice versa? Ms. Brand? 
Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for that question. The MOU certainly formalized their, our strategy to make that a more structured um, endeavor. And we actually do have, have conducted throughout the last two years joint training sessions, webinars with the teams both here at the national office and um, in the local state offices and their um, offices within the state. So they do understand. And also part of the MOU, one of the results of that is we developed a matrix. And I believe there's a copy out on the table that will, I think, just outlines the different programs and some of the, the differences that will help people explain not only for our employees, but for customers and lenders that, that are involved in the program. Ms. Christian. So not only have we interagency trained, so SBA has trained USDA, USDA has trained SBA. When we are out, and as the regional administrator, when I was out on the field, I would go out with the state directors of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, and we would conduct trainings for local leaders, legislators. We would have congressional roundtables and inform them of our products and services separately, and then also talk about in ways that we can help each other. So if you're a small business owner, but you may need more access to capital than we're able to give you, but you need our resources to help you write that business plan, well then perhaps USDA is the way to go for your capital, but you come to us and we'll set you up with a mentor and a business plan and a business coach and we'll get you on your way on the technical side. So it has been a great partnership to get our resources out to the community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, we will go ahead and recognize uh, Congresswoman Angie Craig at this time from Minnesota Second. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to start uh, with a question for Ms. Ms. Brand. Thank you both for testifying and for being here today. Of the numerous USDA rural business programs, there are some outstanding ones that provide funds directly to small businesses, such as the Value Added Producer Grant Program, the Rural Micro Entrepreneur Assistance Program, and the Rural Energy for America programs. These programs can make a big difference to small businesses in rural communities. The Value Added Producer Grant has been especially impactful in my district, where just this past fiscal year, businesses in Red Wing, Northfield, West St. Paul, Farmington, and Dundas have received funding for necessary production equipment. What data are you collecting about the efficacy of these programs, and how are you ensuring that those who are eligible for these programs are adequately being served? Thank you very much for that question. We um, have matrix that we metrics that we measure on each of those. We study, and it's important that we look at the jobs created, the um, geographic disbursement of of our program funding. Um, for example, the value added producer grant program is um, a very popular program. In fact, it is oversubscribed about three to one. So it's a competitive program, and we have a a very methodical way of evaluating applications that is run through several um, pan review panels in order to make sure that they not only meet the requirements of the program, but that are being the biggest impact is being made. And, and our other programs as well have the underwriting requirements and the regulations that we follow, but also um, looking at the impact that it makes for those communities with regard to underserved communities, jobs created, and those um, other measures like that. That's fantastic. I just want to um, follow up with our, our committee has held two hearings on the clean energy economy, and we've heard about the number of uh, small businesses engaged in energy efficiency, construction, and manufacturing. Uh, we've also seen the increased employment opportunities in renewable energy. Uh, I was proud to secure increased funding for the Rural Energy for America program uh, during the appropriations process, which issues grants and loans to farms and rural small businesses. Um, how do USDA rural business programs or the, the small business uh, efforts that you also undertake, Ms. Christian, uh, how do those support the growth and development of small businesses in the clean energy economy? Well, most recently, we actually held an event with the Department of Energy, USDA, and SBA, and it was focused on 
geographically, it was energy in Appalachia. And our position was all types of energy and the supply chain and the ancillary businesses that come along with larger energy facilities being located in a rural community. So we are well aware of that small businesses around energy will succeed. There are so many jobs that are there, and, and many times people just think about the big energy company, but it really is those ancillary businesses. And we work at SBA, our Western Pennsylvania office is constantly working with small business owners that are directly related to the energy industry, whether it's making a widget for whatever it is they're doing, I'm not going to pretend I know. <laughs> but our small business owners are making that widget, and we are helping them, whether they're a business of 10 or a business of 500, we are helping them to help the energy business and to succeed. And it really is helping those communities. So when those smaller businesses are able to succeed around these energy facilities, then the whole community really thrives. And that's something that's needed in these rural areas. So we are seeing such a difference. And USDA is working with energy. We're working with USDA. It absolutely makes sense for us all to be working in this universe together. Thank you. Ms. Brand, anything to add in the 30 seconds I have left? That through the REAP program, the Rural Energy, Energy for America, we could help many of the small businesses that um, SBA funds as, and as well through energy efficiency, whether it be lighting for those or refrigerators or refrigeration system, things to help them improve their bottom line and reduce their energy cost. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I yield back. Thank you. We'll now go ahead and recognize Congressman Dan Bishop from North Carolina's 9th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Ms. Christian, I'm proud to represent uh, more than 1,500 poultry farmers in my district. And in fact, in the 9th District of North Carolina, poultry farms produce in excess of a billion five annual output. And the, the SBA has proposed a new rule that would restrict the ability of poultry farmers to access SBA Section 7A loans. And I believe this rule would unnecessarily hurt the thousands of poultry farmers across the country, including the 1,500 in my district. Um, I understand that the agency is still reviewing uh, the rule, and I'd like to know if I could what the status of that review is. So that particular rule is outside of my purview at this time. I am sure now that I am in this role as uh, a National Rural Affairs Director that that will come up. Um, I've only been in this position for two months, but that is something that affects rural America outside of your district and, and throughout. Uh, prior, I was the regional administrator, and Delaware was included, and that's a big issue in Delaware also. So if I could, um, I will get back to you on that, and we will make sure we have accurate information for you on where we are in that thinking at SBA. I would appreciate that. I, uh, I began my service in Congress after ha having just won a special election, and so I'm learning about that uh, and intend to learn more about it. And, and I appreciate what you said earlier about, you know, the key aspects of your position being to listen to businesses and, and the experiences they have and then to follow up. So I, that'd be terrific. I'd appreciate that very much. Uh, Ms. Brand, if I could ask you, of the programs that uh, that the Rural Business Cooperative Service oversees, which one has been the most successful in attracting private capital investment? Thank you for that question. I would say that um, our largest program, the Business and Industry Guaranteed Loan Program, um, requires that we have um, private equity into the project, whether it be from the owner or um, other investments that they have received. Oftentimes, these projects are quite big and require more than just the our USDA guarantee, but um, partnership with SBA, other federal agencies, or state and local tax credit dollars and those sort of things. Um, we do also have a program within um, Rural Business Cooperative Service called the uh, Rural Business Investment Program, where we certify private investment funds to um, serve rural America and people that, that helps them is re, to um, attract investors to, and most of those are, are geared towards specific geographic areas or industries. But between the two of them, I think they have had a significant impact on bringing dollars, private dollars to balance out the federal monies that are used for rural communities. Thank you, ma'am. 
Um, I've got one more. In, in 2017, uh, USDA and SBA resource partners score signed an MOU to support new and beginning farmers. And I was uh, I'm unfamiliar with the program, reading about it here, that it provides sort of free or low-cost mentoring and training to entrepreneurs throughout the country. So I assume this MOU was focusing on, on farmers. And I wonder, wonder if either of you are aware of activities generated by this MOU. It seems like a, a particularly difficult thing to do, given the nature of what I understand about most farming businesses tend to be passed on family to family and or, or generation to generation within families. At least I see a lot of that in my district. And I'm curious whether or not this uh, – this effort produces uh, results and if you see activity resulting from so it. So the, the Small Business Development Centers, along with all of our resource partners, provide technical assistance to small business owners. So it could be a Women's Business Center, Small Business Development Center, SCORE. We have uh, partners focused on veterans, ve veterans Business Outreach Centers, and they are helping all industries, including in, in rural locations and farmers, uh, if they so need our resources, to, and I apologize, <laughs> um, with their business plans, with technical assistance, with getting that access to capital. We can also help them prepare for their loans, um, for their loan application. So these partners are out there. Um, in regard to the MOU in particular, I do know that SBDCs are working um, with SBAs working partners with them to get out to these communities to make sure they have that technical resource because to simply give access to capital with no guidance at times is not very helpful at all. So we want to make sure we do have that technical part and that's what the SBDCs are there to do. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, and we also uh, have a special guest joining us today from the Agriculture Committee, uh, Congressman T.J. Cox from California 21, and uh, he's joined us to ask a couple of questions uh, as well. So thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I want to thank uh, Chairman, uh, Chairwoman uh, Fink and I, Ranking Member Joyce, for allowing me to wave around to this community. I represent California's 21st Congressional District, which is uh, the Central Valley of California, with the majority of the district being rural as well. And we'd like to say uh, the 21st Congressional District is the top agricultural district in the top agricultural state. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Ms. Brand, Mr. Christian, for being here and being able to answer our questions. Uh, in May, I and 18 other members introduced H.R. 2633, a bill to study reviving the Office of Rural Affairs within this SBA. Uh, the bill would require the SBA to submit a very detailed report to the Congress in this committee on the history of the Office of the Rural Affairs. Uh, then in January, uh, myself, Chairwoman Finkenauer, uh, Mr. Golden, uh, and other members of the committee, uh, 14 other members, submitted a letter to the SBA asking for this particular information on the Office of Rural Affairs back in January. And I'd like to submit this letter for uh, the record. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed to tell you, and you may know this, we never received a response from the SBA. The authorizing committee for the SBA never got a response from uh, this letter. A little disappointed in that. Uh, at any rate, we've been advocating for the reestablishment of this office since the beginning of the year, and I'm very glad to see that you've been appointed, Ms. Christian. Uh, so we're here today. We'd like to know a bit more about the office, how you uh, intend to use it, and to support rural small businesses. And so the first question, uh, uh, what date were you uh, appointed, uh, Ms. Christian, to the to be the National Director of the Office of Rural Affairs? I believe the official date was August 30th okay. of this year. Yeah, and how many uh, people are going to be employed in that office? What's the current budget going to be? So we are working on the logistics of the office right now. I have been there two months. I was the regional administrator in Region 3. I'm transitioning from that position into this position. So we are still working that on that at a headquarters level with our current acting administrator and our staff. Well, when do you expect to be able to uh, have those plans uh, in, in place and be able to get back to the committee here with uh, uh, the size, scope, uh, budget, and so on? I will uh, work with the SBA team at our headquarters here in Washington, D.C., and we'll see uh, as soon as possible that we can get that information to you. Is that going to be a year or six months or two weeks or what's that mean, as soon as possible? Congressman, it means 
as soon as I can uh, speak to the staff at SBA and our acting administrator, I will make it a priority today and I will commit to you that I will speak with folks uh, in the agency to today to see a timeline and I will get back to you. Okay, thanks. Were you aware of the letter that we had sent, that the committee had sent, as, uh, asking about the uh, reestablishment of this office? I just saw the letter recently. Okay. So no, I was not aware of it in the past. I've only been in this position, as I stated, since approximately August 30th, and I just recently saw that letter. Okay. Was anybody at the SBA aware of the letter? It's a little concerning that the I, letter got lost. Is that the authorizing committee? We we want. It, it, I don't want to be. We want to help, right? It, is that we're the legislating committee, we're the authorizing committee, and we go to their appropriators to be able to provide the funds to be able to work for the American people, particularly our the people in our rural areas. Absolutely. Area. Here's what I can tell you, Congressman. I will pledge to you, to this committee, and to uh, rural small business owners. I take this job very seriously. I am very honored and privileged to be working in this position now. When I was the regional administrator for Region 3, I did make it a focus to go into rural locations because I saw such a need. And I do believe because I went into those rural locations, I can now, now help on a national level. I will be working on a roadmap and a business plan is how I'm going to structure this office so that we reach places and that we have have the structure that you're looking for and I will share that with you and and discuss that with you and and our staff and I do understand there's concern about the letter but going forward I am going to be and have the staff at SBA be everywhere we need to be to reach these rural communities well great and thanks and we'd certainly appreciate the uh, the commitment for that plan as, as you're speaking but a timeline as well and, and so it's back to the as soon as possible and so if you could commit to getting back to us with the plan in relatively short order, it'd certainly be appreciated. We've got a little bit uh, of time left, but I will yield the balance of my time for uh, the next round. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we are going to do a, a second round. Uh, you know, just some uh, follow up and, and closing the loop a little bit on some of what Mr. Bishop uh, and, and Ms. Uh, Craig were. Uh, talking about, I can tell you, in up in Maine, uh, the partnerships with with farmers has actually been quite helpful. We have a lot of smaller farmers uh, with an aging population, uh, and and uh, less of that. It used to be passed down from you know family to family, and we still have some of that. But often we will find some farmers who don't have anyone uh, to hand that farm off to. So you know programs that help people, young young families who want to get into farming. Uh, you know, learn a little bit, get some mentorship and, and some you know, technical assistance has been a, a big a big help in the state of Maine. So uh, I want to thank you, both of your your agencies for that. Um, you know, you were talking uh, with uh, Congresswoman Craig a little bit about uh, some of the clean energy pro in the program that USDA has is one that's I think quite popular. A lot of farms actually utilizing that in Maine and trying to establish uh, some energy efficiency or even independence. Obviously, they always need some kind of backup just in in case. Uh, but trying to get their overhead costs down is is what it's all uh, about. Uh, and I do want to encourage you to look into ways that you can uh, push forward access to capital for those types of investments because what I, the kind of feedback I get from a lot of small business owners in Maine about things like solar uh, or other uh, energy improvements is that the, the differences in interest rates can make the difference in whether or not it pencils out for them uh, in the short term or short enough term uh, so that they can go ahead and, and prioritize that as an investment. And we've really wanted to see in Maine uh, that SBA would work, um, you know, a little bit uh, more, you know, in conjunction with USDA and with small businesses to, to try and, and make that happen. Uh, so just something I would share with you. Uh, you, you talked about follow-up and obviously uh, Congressman Cox uh, cares passionately about seeing the success uh, of this of this new office and, and new position. Uh, and, and I do think that that follow-up is, is very important. Obviously, this is also on Congress. It's been since the 1990s when, when this uh, program is put forward uh, and, uh, you know, oversight uh, is, is our role. Um, clearly, this was not prioritized under multiple administrations, uh, and it needs to be uh, because rural America really needs that help, as you ha have uh, rightfully uh, pointed out. And I do hope that we will see in the budget uh, some resources for your office and some additional resources because 
uh, you, you've got a lot of passion, uh, but you can't do it all by yourself. You certainly have, you know, the regional offices at SBA, but I think we're going to need uh, some more boots on the ground and, and people out there uh, helping you with this focus on, on rural communities. So we're very interested in the timeline uh, and, and what the plans are. And I did want to ask you, we talked a little bit about opportunity zones, but in your experiences in Region 3, which SBA programs do you think are most helpful, uh, most successful, most known uh, in rural communities, and if you could just randomly choose one, uh, which one needs the most improvement uh, in order to be helpful to rural America? I believe everyone thinks all the SBA does is lend money, and we don't even lend money. <laughs> we just simply guarantee the loans. So it's just education on all the programs. I think we're, we're missing out on the technical part. We have staff that um, are able to walk folks through business plans, but then we also have our partners. And those are resources that are 99.9% .9 free, and don't quote me on that number. But it's very, it's, the majority of them are free. It's taxpayer dollars. It's something that we want these rural communities to understand. Um, something else that's really important, when I'm traveling, uh, business owners are having a workforce issue. They cannot keep employees. A lot of these rural communities have a drug, drug terrible drug epidemic. And um, the opioid crisis and all that has come with that has led to some workforce problems. We are hoping to bridge that gap. We're working with community colleges to have them partner with small businesses and, and do some apprenticeships and really train um, both high school kids, community college kids, and then those re-entering the workforce if they had left um, a position and now they come back. Um, we have the MOU with USDA, which we're working hard with, but I also believe that um, we are breaking down the silos and bringing information from other agencies over um, to rural America. For example, um, there are workforce programs through the Department of Labor, which I regularly speak about and refer over to the Department of Labor because I am, again, we are the boots on the ground. So we have the access to that rural community and the Department of Labor may not have that access, but if I can take that local community and connect them to someone who can help them in the federal government, that's not myself, I've done my job. So I want to inform every one of our programs and services, but I also want them to know as a bigger picture what is out there and what is available. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think we have a, a lot that we agree about. Early on in my, uh, uh, you know, uh, new term here in Congress, I went out being a new member of this committee. I toured all these businesses in, in my district uh, and often took SBA up on offers to do roundtables. We still do that. Uh, and the sad thing is, is I often hear uh, as I talk to small business owners, well, did you ever think about reaching out to SBA about this? wasn't really aware that they do that. Uh, did you know you could get some mentorship through the SCORE program or, or assistance uh, through this program? I don't know it exists. Uh, and you've pointed out there is also a, a rural broadband uh, internet access divide. So boots on the ground again in, in the face-to-face. -face, you mentioned, I thought it was interesting in, in your opening statement uh, that some people may never want to talk to you again. Uh, that's that trust factor with the government and that comes from face-to-face -face and personal relationships. So I just want to, I think you have an opportunity in your position to, to push uh, SBA out into these rural areas uh, where those types of, of meetings um, are really important. Important and, and could make sure that the programs that SBA has to offer are better utilized, uh, and I think that would be a benefit to rural communities. Uh, Ms. Radawagon, would you like to ask any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Ch Chairman. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So, Ms. Christian, how does SBA define rural, and how does USDA refine, define rural? Ms. Brand, how can business owners find out if they qualify as rural according to program requirements? I will not speak for USDA. They have many programs. So as part of this joint MOU, we are using um, the, the rural development's definition of uh, rural. So I will defer to um, Ms. Brand on her programs, but they can find out by contacting our office. We will let them know if they qualify as rural. But it, to be honest, we help everyone. So we're helping rural, suburban, tribal. If you're in a city, if you're, we're helping everyone. We have everyone out there and we are spreading our resources. We are having more of a focus on rural. So if you are just outside a 50,000 person parameter that defines you as rural, we are still going to make sure that we help that community. So we are helping all communities, but the MOU does have the focus, and I'll defer to Betty. 
Ms. Barron. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, in, in our programs in rural business cooperative service, the definition of rural are those towns or municipalities less than 50,000. And they can find out through um, not only our state office, but we also have many area offices within the state and have people out ready to explain to them and help them understand. If, but, but certainly if it's less than 50,000, it's pretty cut and dry. Thank you. Uh, next question. The SBA Rural Strong Initiative is delivered in partnership with USDA through the 2018 MOU. According to an SBA press release, Rural Strong is a comprehensive initiative comprised with specific programming to rural economic development needs. What services are pr provided through this initiative and where have events taken place? Who determines where and when joint events are held? I was a part of putting that together. I'm very proud of the work that we did as part of the MOU. We pretty much, I use the term roadmap. That's what that is. It's a playbook on how we can better service the communities together. And we determine where we're going. We reach out to our congressionals. We reach out to chambers of commerce. We really try to get as many people in one room at one time to give our services. A lot of these small business owners are working the business. They don't have time during the day to come out. So we want to make sure that if they do come to us for an hour or two, we have many, many resources from all of our resource partners, USDA. When I would do an event, I would sit there with my USDA state director. We would have our resource partners, our district directors, local mayors, state reps, congressionals, everyone at the table, because it's a holistic approach. It's not just one person helping one person. We want to help communities as a whole. We want to get as much information out as we possibly can. And we get to connect these business owners with their legislators, with their elected officials that they may not always be able to connect with. And we have seen things happen in those communities that they may have needed to get done, but they didn't have the door. To, or they didn't know how to access you. So it's a two-way street. We hope that you come to us and you let us know what you need and we bring business owners to you also. I'd like to just get your perspective as well, Ms. Brand. Yes, um, thank you very much. That um, Ms. Christian's description of those events and um, opportunities for um, all of the partners, federal, state, and local, to get together and help under help our um, small business owners and people, communities, and rural areas understand how these programs not just what our programs do and what SBA's programs do, but how they can work together and really describe with those people that are sitting there um, through those meetings are able to describe certain projects, how they were accomplished, the different partners that came in, and that helped people visualize. Also, um, the lenders in those areas are there as well, and they are also understanding and sharing best practices to help people become more familiar and comfortable with, because every situation could be different and, and is unique, and we help them figure out and visualize what it would look like for them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. We're going to go ahead and recognize. Did you have further questions, Mr. Cox? Thank you. Uh, and, and thanks, uh, Ms. Rattleware. I was going to ask the same exact question about rural definition. There's all seems to be a conflict between the USDA, the Census Bureau, the uh, Treasury Department, uh, and Commerce Department, and so on. Because I can tell you is that uh, a lot of the counties I have, they have towns with fit larger than 50,000 people, but then 20 miles out, it's as rural as you can be. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of those areas don't qualify uh, for a lot of the USDA financing. And I want to make sure that they do under the SBA. But a lot of the issues that, that you find in rural areas is simply uh, market values and appraised values. If I want to build a building that's going to cost me a million dollars and I, because it's being built in this uh, rural area, it might only appraise at 800000 and then you can only lend 70% on that. And so I've got a large uh, financing gap there. And uh, I'd like to know what, what are the tools that are available out there to be able to meet that financing gap uh, and are you working with uh, you know, the Treasury Department, like the, the CDFI fund, which oftentimes brings uh, that type of capital, that gap financing, uh, available to uh, uh, these worthy projects in rural areas? 
Yes, thank you. Um, you're exactly right. It takes um, CDFIs, it takes um, tax credits, new markets tax credits, it takes um, a lot of federal and state and local partners. There's um, historical tax credits that can be utilized as well. And to put all those together, many of these small businesses may be overwhelmed by the options. And so we work together to make sure that the, the all of the, the resources are available and that are understood so that they can truly figure out it. And, and the value of the real estate does have an impact on being in rural. Oftentimes, the specialty of the, the collateral may be um, limiting it as well, but all of those are things that we have worked with for the many years that we've had the program and understand and, and have had many success stories of businesses that were able to fulfill their dreams and provide jobs in the community through our programs. Great. Thanks. Ms. Kristen, do you want to weigh in on that? I think I just want to emphasize that we are out in the community outside of where USDA can reach. So it is a part of this partnership that we have for us to possibly come in in that circumstance that you just described. So we may not have a business that qualifies for USDA services, but they can obtain access to capital through one of our lenders. So rural, although there's definitions with numbers, there's still common sense rural, right, outside of the government's definition of rural, and we still want to make sure we reach those people that are in those areas. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's certainly the case that the common sense definition of rural sometimes doesn't meet the uh, statutorily defined uh, sense and limits a lot of that lending. Uh, you know, and the other thing is, is that uh, it's interesting what you're talking about, opportunity zones, is that opportunity zones may be a source of capital, but that, that capital is always uh, there for one reason, and it's, it's employed and it's invested to meet demand. And that's the issue in rural areas, is that there's a demand. I can build a fantastic hotel with my opportunity zones in upstate Maine, but if no one's up there, right, uh, they're not going to get a return on that. And I know one of the core functions and the mandated functions of the US Office of Rural Affairs is to promote uh, tr tourism and travel. And, uh, and I guess, uh, are there plans to work with the United States Tourism and Travel Administration to assist small businesses uh, in rural areas with tur tourism promotion and development? So what I found in these rural locations is tourism is really having a boom. So in these coal towns and uh, steel mill towns, tourism is the new hot boom and it's the new hot economy. Um, actually, in West Virginia, we partnered with USDA to uh, do joint lending for a hotel outside of a ski resort in southern West Virginia. West Virginia and Pennsylvania are my rural in Virginia, so I apologize. I know I'm national now, but I was very focused on this area. There are uh, Hatfield and McCoy trails in West Virginia. That's a big boom for the economy. There, there is so much going on in these rural areas. So yes, I, I focus with the state. Um, I will be focusing nationally now. So that that is something that I think we forget about in these rural communities that could advertise to come into the rural communities. And in speaking of rural opportunity zones, to build a hotel, perhaps focusing on the tourism and the small businesses and the great restaurants and the, the great breweries. We, we do so much at SBA related to tourism. And, and I would like to package that to help these rural areas advertise for themselves so that they can you know, feel the boom that's going on in the rest of the country. No, th thanks so much. That is absolutely one of the mandated goals of this office, and so I'd like to uh, yeah, reiterate uh, our support for that uh, for that goal there. So thanks very much. I'll yield. Well, I think that we're uh, going to go ahead and, and wrap it up at, at this point. Uh, I do want to thank you both. Ms. Brenda, I apologize. I didn't really have a whole lot of questions for you about USDA, but uh, we, we're we very familiar with the programs offered in, in Maine and appreciate the work that's being done as we do uh, SBA, although I think you know more work to be done, and that's why you're in this position. 
uh, and we look forward to working with you uh, to help you be as successful as you can. And, and with that in mind, uh, I'm sure that the committee staff will be following up with you uh, with some questions about program uh, metrics, data, and plans, budget, uh, what we can, might expect uh, out of a, our president's budget request in, in support of your mission and things along those lines because we want to make sure that we're moving forward. Uh, certainly incumbent upon us not to drop the ball. Uh, you, you did mention uh, you have a, um, by the way, you know, Maine being at the, the northern uh, stretch uh, of the mountain range, tomato, tomato type thing, uh, Appalachia, Appalachia. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we say it a little bit different, but you, you, you pointed out you, you have a real, I think, pride point in that area and a strong focus on it. Don't forget uh, the other rural areas because there's a lot of them uh, and, they, and they do need help. Um, so we're going to look to you to, to really have a, a national focus because uh, every community, every rural community deserves uh, the, the help. So thank you. All right. I suppose I'll go ahead and read uh, Congresswoman Finkenauer's closing statement, uh, unless there's anything in here I object to. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I suppose it's probably not the case. So. Um, uh, thank you again for being here today, both of you. We appreciate it, uh, and we appreciate the work that you do for rural communities. Uh, small businesses are the backbone of the American economy, and for rural communities that continue to struggle uh, with things such as declining population, um, innovators and, and small business owners can help unlock new potential and opportunity. As we've discussed today, the Department of Agriculture uh, and the Small Business Administration, uh, Administration are already working to engage rural businesses and communities, but certainly more can be done. Uh, this hearing was the first in a series of oversight efforts to make sure that our federal resources are reaching small businesses and promoting economic development in rural communities. As part of that oversight, this subcommittee will monitor the progress being made by the Office of Rural Affairs as it scales up services and outreach efforts in rural areas. Uh, this office will also continue its outreach to leaders in Northeast Iowa, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, but we, we will certainly focus on Maine as well. Um, and we want to hear about uh, their experiences working with the Department of Agriculture and the Small Business Administration to make sure that the programs and services that we discussed today are translating into real results for rural communities. As we continue to work on ways to better support entrepreneurs and small businesses in America, I encourage my colleagues here today to do the same in the congressional districts that they represent. And I would ask unanimous consent that members of the committee have five legislative days to submit statements and supporting materials for the record without objection so ordered. And if there's no further business to come before the committee, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.